Good morning, everyone. How was your night? I hope you slept well. Today is Thursday, 29. Today is end of the month. And the topic is His righteousness for your sin nature. Praise the Lord. Before we start this beautiful morning, let's say prayer together. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Father, for this month. Indeed, you are a good father. Thank you for, for your provision. Thank you for your protection for this month. We thank you, Father, for every crooked way you've made straight, O Lord. Thank you for making every of our mistakes right, O Lord, in this month of February. Father, we thank you. We are not taking it for granted. We give you all the praise. Thank you for your word we are about to receive this morning. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Once more, welcome to Rhapsody of Reality. To the topic is, is righteousness for your sin nature. Romans, uh, it's, Romans 6 verse 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you. Hallelujah. Our opening verse says, Sin shall not have dominion over you. This is because the man or woman who is born again, he is born sin free. In a previous verse, the Apostle Paul talking about our righteousness, salvation, and the grace that we have received from God and how they came about, asks a thought-provoking question. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Romans 6, 2. Paul wasn't referring to himself and the other apostles alone, but to all of us. We are dead to sin. That means sin has no power over you because the nature of sin was supplanted with the nature of what? Righteousness. 1 Corinthians 15, 56 says, Let us know that the strength of sin is the law, but the very thing that gave life to sin which is the law, has been abolished by Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2 verse 14 to 15 says, For he is our peace, who had made both one, and had broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandment contained in ordinances. The Lord Jesus has given us victory over sin's death and the grave. We have been made, praise the Lord, not just righteous, but the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. See yourself in this light. The unregenerate man, the person who isn't born again, or the other hand, is a sinner by nature and enslaved to sin. He can't but sin. Even when he doesn't want to, because he has the nature of sin. But this isn't the case with you. You are righteous by nature. God made it so. Your righteousness is a gift from God. Romans 5, 7, 10. And that righteousness gives you the ability to do right and live right. There's nothing you could have done on your own, through your own human perfection, to become righteous. Praise the Lord. Likewise, there is also nothing you can do or not do that will make you less righteous before God. You are as righteous as Jesus is righteous because he substitutes his righteousness for your sin nature. Oh, what a wonderful life we have in Christ Jesus. His righteousness for your sin nature. That's our topic. What is pastor helping us to understand this beautiful money? It's helping us to understand because oftentimes when you're suffering, you begin to think back and say, oh, maybe because of what I did, that is why God is punishing me. Maybe because of this, that's why God is punishing me. Maybe that is, but that is not truth. Praise the Lord. That is not, that is why Christ died for you. Praise the Lord. The moment you realize and you say, God, I'm sorry, that is it. It's just Satan letting you, making you to feel that God is not, he's not a man. He does not look at our weakness in the struggle, but he considers our strength. That's God. That is why he's different. 
Praise the Lord. It's only human being. And they will tell you, I forgive you, but they will still be saying, I'm going to be very careful with this person because I don't want this thing to happen again. With God, it's not like that. It's with you like that. It's no matter what you commit, God loves you because he does not see you as a sinner. And that is why we can also say we that claim that we are Christian, we begin to look like look at unbeliever and say, why is that unbeliever so blessed? Me that is having God going to church, that is to let you know that God does not look at our weakness. That's to tell you that sin, when God sees you, he doesn't look at the sin. That is why you see that unbeliever that you, like, you the judge, since you are judging your mankind, you the judge is saying, that unbeliever is not right to how come God is blessing. That is to let you know that God does not look. That's why you see people that does not go to church, they don't do the way you think. Because sometimes we feel too righteous that other people are not righteous, and which is very, very wrong. You are not in the place to judge anybody. But let me just, just figurative and to make you understand what I'm trying to say. You see people, you say, oh, this person, you see the person living a bad life, or maybe this person is sleeping with different men, a prostitute, and you see them, they are having children. And you look look at you, you are tying your hair, you're going to church, you're decent, you're not sleeping with men, and you believe in God for children. That is to let you know that God does not see sin when he wants to deal with every one of us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's not by our righteousness that we are getting what we are getting. Don't think that because your life is beautiful, that means you are free from sin. That's because you are doing something right. 